Hi everyone, Nora Colvin here. Today I'm going to read you my story, Not Too Little, that's included in the 2022 Anthology Angels collection of stories, It's a Kind of Magic. I hope you enjoy it. Not Too Little by Nora Colvin. Too little for this, too little for that. All his life, Jimmy had been too little. He wished he was bigger, big enough to go to magic school with his brothers, big enough to help dad in the lab, big enough to learn spells, big enough to be not too little anymore. One night when he couldn't sleep, Jimmy heard his brothers whispering in the hallway. He tiptoed to the door, opened it a crack and squinted through. They were carrying a huge pot and had their cloaks draped over their arms. He knew they were going out. He just knew it. Jimmy pushed the door open. He rubbed his eyes. Can I come too? Of course not, you little pipsqueak. You're too little, said Adam. And you won't snitch on us if you know what's good for you, said Brett. With that, they put on their cloaks of invisibility and disappeared, pot and all. I'll show them I am big enough. Jimmy crept to the living room and peeked in. All was as it should be. The TV was blaring. Dad was snoring louder than a lawnmower. Midnight purred in Mum's lap as she scrolled through videos on her phone. All three were as alert as bears in hibernation. Perfect. Jimmy dragged a chair to the door of his brother's room. The ledge where they hid the key was high and he had to stretch, but he reached it. Oops, the key clattered to the floor. Jimmy held his breath. No one yelled from the living room, what's going on? No one clicked the TV to mute. No feet stomped down the hallway. Jimmy turned the key in the lock. It was a bit tight, so he had to jiggle it. He knew it had worked when he heard it click. He ignored the keep out, that means you, squirt, sign on the door. After all, if he couldn't spell, he couldn't read, could he? And he couldn't read, but as sure as bacon smells good in the morning, he knew what that sign meant. Jimmy closed the door behind him. Soft moonlight coming through the window made the room feel both eerie and magical at the same time. He scrunched his nose and sniffed. The smells weren't nearly as pleasant as bacon in the morning, but he went straight to the bench where his brothers prepared their potions and spells. There was an assortment of jars and pots in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some were filled with brightly coloured liquid that gurgled and burbled. Some had ghastly things Jimmy was sure were the lizards, gizzards and frogs' tongues. One gave off a bright orange vapour that glowed. Jimmy took a whiff. Blah! Too much. It made him cough and splutter. He grabbed his pyjama shirt to cover his mouth and nose and muffle the sound. Oops, he knocked over one of the jars. The slimy liquid oozed onto the bench. He tried to scoop it back in, but it was very sticky. He did pretty well, but now it was all over his hands and P.U. did it stink. He rubbed his hands together to get it off, but the more he rubbed, the stickier it got. His fingers started to stick together and his nose itched. What if he scratched it and his fingers stuck? Jimmy's tummy tumbled like a washing machine. Burp. With an enormous shudder, Jimmy was the size of a mouse. Oh no! He wanted to be bigger, not smaller. He had to get to the bathroom. He had to get the sticky stuff off. Jimmy tiptoed to the door. With his tiny feet, it wouldn't have mattered if he'd stomped. He looked up. The door handle was so far up, he'd never reach it. 
Even if he could with his tiny hands, he'd never be able to turn it. A sliver of light showed under the door. Maybe if he flattened himself on the floor, he could squeeze under. Push. Squeeze. Push. Easy. Now to the bathroom without being seen. Down the hallway he scampered on his quick little feet. He paused at the door to the living room. Dad was still snoring. Midnight was still snoozing. And Mum was still scrolling. Good. He planned the path. Under the couch, behind the bookshelf, across the mat, and past the pot plant. He was almost to the other side when Dad snuffled and snorted. Midnight hissed, and Mum said, Shh, what was that? Uh-oh, Midnight had seen him. She bounded off Mum's lap. Jimmy definitely did not want to be a Midnight Feast. He raced to the pot plant and squeezed in behind, just as Midnight pounced. Luckily, Midnight's paw was too big to reach behind the pot, and the pot was too heavy for her to move. That didn't stop her trying, though. Jimmy covered his head with his hands, just in case. He'd never seen Midnight's claws up so close before. They looked deadlier than daggers. What are you doing, Midnight? asked Dad. Probably a cockroach, said Mum. I'll get the spray. Come here, Midnight. But Midnight did not want to come here. She had seen something interesting. She could smell something delicious and she knew where it was. There was no way she was going to come here. But when Mum picked her up and tickled her ears, she calmed down. That always worked. Jimmy took the opportunity and ran for his life. What a relief. The bathroom door was open. Oh no! The sink was too high. Jimmy looked for something to climb on, but there was nothing. Where were the ladders when you needed them? Ladder. Hmm, maybe he could use the ladder on his toy fire truck. But that would mean he'd have to go back through the lounge room past midnight. Not a good idea. There was no way he'd jump into the toilet bowl, even if he could reach it. He slid around the shower, trying to find some water but it had been wiped dry. What could he do? He'd do anything to be his normal size again. Perhaps being small wasn't so bad, as long as he wasn't this small. If only he could get this sticky stuff off, maybe Dad could make him big again. Jimmy heard his parents in the living room, turning off the TV, closing the windows, taking plates to the kitchen. That meant only one thing. They'd be coming to the bathroom next to clean their teeth. Ah! Then they'd be up the hallway checking on him, making sure he was asleep. Yikes! He'd better think of something fast. That's when he got it. Midnight's water bowl. Out of the bathroom and into the laundry he scooted. There was Midnight's bowl, and there was no Midnight yet. He jumped up to reach the top of the bowl and pulled himself up onto the edge. Practicing the high bars in gymnastics came in handy. And yes, there was water in the bowl. He jumped down and splashed himself all over. He didn't care that his pyjamas got wet. All he cared was that he got rid of the sticky, stinky, slimy stuff. After that, he'd think about being his normal size again. Oof! He shuddered. And there he was, dripping wet in the laundry, when Mum appeared. What are you doing here and why are you all wet? she asked. I don't know, said Jimmy. Have you been sleepwalking again? Let's get you dry and pop you back to bed. Uh-huh, said Jimmy. Off you go now, said Mum. I'll be there in a minute. The chair was still outside his brother's door and the key was still in the lock, just where Jimmy had left them. Better fix that, he thought. In the morning, before he was even awake, his brothers were standing over him. What were you doing in our room last night? said Brett. We're telling Dad, said Adam. You'll be grounded, you silly little pipsqueak, they said. If you tell Dad, I'll tell him you went out last night and you'll be grounded too. What's the big secret anyway? Adam and Brett nodded to each other. 
Okay, we're testing a new shrinking potion. We hope it'll shrink the giant garbage patch in the ocean. We want to make sure it works before we tell Dad. Now Jimmy was awake. Does it work? Sure does, said Brett. We shrank the whole refuse tip down to one tiny corner. Wow, said Jimmy. That's awesome. He paused, thinking. But it might not work in the ocean. And how would you know? Jimmy told them everything about shrinking, about Nilly being a feast for midnight, about jumping into midnight's bowl and how washing it off had brought him back to normal size. Perhaps he is big enough to help, said Adam. Maybe, Brett winked. I'm not too little anymore, said Jimmy. I'm just the right size. That's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.